Hi, everybody. Welcome to our weekly Facebook Live broadcast here from the Helipad in Victoria, B.C. Um, I'm Tom Lang. You got me this week. Eh? This week. And uh, I figured I'd show you a few things about Voice Live 3 Extreme that you may not have known, or you may have known and not used. But um, anyway, there's a, I've got three demonstrations going on. One is going to be me with an acoustic guitar. Now, that's unusual, right? Because I, I usually play uh, acoustic guitar on the demos. But anyway, um, the first one is uh, acoustic guitar going through a range of different harmony options using, um, using steps, using the looper, and some other stuff. And I'll discuss each of my little demonstrations at the end of each one. So, you know, and if you have any questions, please feel free to send them through. We've got Spencer here. He's going to... Um, fire them up to me. If, uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing or in general, that's great. So anyway, okay, like I said, three demos. First one's acoustic guitar and stuff. Second one, we're going to bring in a synth. We're going to show some MIDI capabilities of uh, Voice Live 3, uh, the looper that can sync to MIDI, etc. And then the third one, um, I'm going to leave it as a bit of a surprise because it's just something a little unusual. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that it's something kind of cool. So I'm going to go through some different harmonies. Break. 
made it through the first song guys get off your phones we did it <laughs> we got through the battery problem and we made it anyway okay so let's talk about what was going on in that song i started off with the boom check boom check boom check on the guitar but you probably noticed i don't know if you can see in the inset of the product instead of going i was recording the loop and then i did instead of going play I went directly to overdub because I had reverb on the guitar and it's going and if you go directly to play from recording you go right because it stops the recording so anyway we have a, a foot switch on there that allows you to go directly into overdub when you want or directly into playing when you want so there was that that's the first bit and then before I made this song I uh, made what's called a preset that had steps in it. I think there's six steps. First step is uh, just me, no harmonies. Uh, second one is one voice below. And did you notice whenever I kicked that in, I don't know if you noticed it, but as I changed chords, the harmony moved up nicely. It moved around by itself, and I purposefully kept my singing note on the same note, and I let the harmony move around underneath. I just love when that happens. And then, of course, then I kicked it into the next one, where one foot in front of that part. Uh, that, for those folks in Facebook land, um, got to apologize because Facebook doesn't come into stereo. But up to that point, the song's been kind of sort of mono. And then when I go one foot in, and those two other harmonies, the one below and above me, they kick out to the sides. And they, it just sounds so huge. I've got my headphones on here, and it's just, it's just very, very nice. So anyway, so there was that. And then as I stepped through, uh, I went through that next one was one foot in front of the other. That's using, you know, obviously the bass voice, and it sounds kind of gospely. Love that. And then, of course, just overdubbing and building up from there into the looper and, and then picking up my fiddle and uh, trying to sort of squawk out some pieces on there. We're going to use this a little bit later, but that's all I'm going to tell you about that. Okay, let's move on to the next demo. Okay, I'm going to grab the Strat for this. And uh, I guess you guys are holding your questions to the end. Or you don't have any questions because I'm explaining it so perfectly, so elucidatively. All right, so this demo, this is using um, MIDI sync. Uh, this synth has, uh, I'm going to put on an arpeggiator, and the metronome and the echo effects and some of the rhythm rhythmic effects like chopper and panning and uh, vibrato and things, which can sync to MIDI. I won't be using the rhythmic effects, but I will use timed echoes and the uh, metronome, the kick drum going <coughs> driven from the MIDI clock of the synth. So let's see if I can do that. I gotta, you can, uh, when you see as I raise my foot to change the preset, I'm gonna go to the next preset, uh, which is this one. But notice I'm still in talk mode. I'm talking to you. I can change presets, presets while talking to you. Those people that own Voice Life 3s or anything like that, you know that's possible. Okay, here we go. So. Got a note to myself. I 
I got a note to myself to change to the next loop because this next loop slot has a different setting. I'm going to go serial, um, which means that I'm I'm going to make separate parts that aren't meant to to, to play over do over top of one another. They're only meant to go in, you know, like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, that kind of thing. So I've set this loop up to do that, and I've stored it. And I'm just going to make a quick look down, make sure. Um, all looks nominal. First of all, the metronome in sync with the synth. So far, so good. Now I'm going to set, the, the looper is also set to record on audio trigger, which means I'll go into record by pressing the button, but it won't actually start recording until I go, bow, 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 right? He said, help. Let me, let me change that because I don't like that sound.
Wow, that kind of worked. All right. It's interesting. I got to explain a little bit of sidebar here. The lyrics to those first two tunes are lyrics to songs that I've recorded on other albums. And in the middle of the night last night when I was panicking about, what am I going to sing for these people? I thought, well, man, you've written thousands of words. Why don't you put them in together? And it was really fun to reimagine at least those two songs as... Um, like, I never would have thought that song Supersonic would have sounded like that. And it's kind of cool. I like it. It's different. It's like a remix. Okay, so what did I do there? Um, you saw that I went, and this is an arpeggiator, driving the metronome of Voice Life 3. Boom, boom, boom. So they're in sync. And then when I went, so the, everything stayed in sync. It's really, really cool. Um, and then you noticed how when I was recording, I only recorded snippets of the parts. The first thing I recorded must have sounded kind of weird because it was just like ba 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 and then I went click the button and I went ba 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 etc etc. When you're using serial mode, because the chord patterns tend to repeat, you might as well just record only the little bit of it. You don't need to record eight bars, sixteen bars of just record like just enough. And the B part, which is the boom, 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 the four, 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 two, 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 two. Um, that part, I had to go a little bit longer with that, but it was so cool because I just put all of that in the can, and then I was able to punch back and forth with playing A or B, and um, that's where we are with that. Spencer's got you got his hands up. Oh, when you're using uh, Voice, Live Ex Voice Live 3 Extreme has the backing track feature, which allows you to import WAV files and then play them back under a foot switch control. And you've got up to, what, 100 songs or something. Just for the you know background for people who don't know exactly what this product does. Can you put them out separate outputs? With the latest update, you can. And it's kind of cool because um, then if you've got a sound person out there, you can mix you know, the backing track separately, because that's that's a problem, you know, when you're sitting at home and you've got your headphones on and you're trying to prepare your gig and you're trying to get your mix just right. Because because this thing has so much, so many sounds inside, you've got vocals, you've got guitar, something else coming in, maybe a synth, and then you've got the backing track. So you're always trying to mix things. And when you've got that at home, it's it's sometimes it's kind of hard, hard to do that. So, Alan, yes, you can do that. Um, uh, that's a good question. In fact, one time I was using backing tracks with another band I was playing with. Um, I admit it. I used backing tracks. But it was a power trio, and I needed it to sound huge. So anyway, um, I created the backing tracks so that they were in mono for the front. But the other track was a metronome track. So I ran that to the drummer, and I had a little sort of one, two, three, four, go. And so the drummer got the metronome to start and to keep in time with. And he was able to mix with his little mixer, uh, the backing tracks versus the metronome. And that really, really helped, actually. Out front, who cares if it's mono? I do! But it only for the people in the audience, it only really matters for the people sitting right in the middle because as soon as you get left or right, you know, you miss out on all that. Anyway, what I was saying about that, that demo was, you know, sequencer. What else was I doing? I was also using step mode, Remember what I said about step mode, which is it's basically creating a chain of presets within a preset. And it allowed me to turn off that echo at the beginning. That's the only change I made. So that the first song was, you know, I'm super sun. Super sun. Oh, yeah. The echo, which was timed from the MIDI clock, so it's perfectly in sync, uh, had one of our filters on it. So it sounds like super sun. And then that fit into the reverb and made it sound really gorgeous. Um, so, so that's what I did there, and um, and the guitar, the guitar sounds somehow I got messed up, and the guitar sounds got changed. That's cool. You're 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 allowed to do that. You can, Voice Life Three can have one guitar sound for all the vocal presets, so that it never changes, or you can have a different guitar sound for every preset. It's 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 really very very cool. Okay, so I probably haven't used up anywhere near enough time, but I've got one more demo for you. And uh, this is the surprise part of the, the pro uh, of the program, folks. Oh, no, one more thing. The end of the last demo. You saw 
I was playing the keyboard and the harmonies were coming out. You know, that that, that really is a- almost one of my most favorite harmony methods to use where you use a MIDI keyboard to control harmonies because, you know, as, if you're used to playing the guitar and everything, you notice you sing up, the oh, harmonies go up. You sing down, harmonies go down. You know, they sort of move around that way. It's, it's very parallel motion, which we're very accustomed to hearing. But with notes mode, you can do anything you want. You've got, you know, four voices under your various fingers. You can have bass, high. And if you sing ba 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 ba, you could have the harmonies going ba ba do ba da do do ba da do 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 do. You know, you could do that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of fun. Um, and that's basically what I was doing there. And then I just added it to the loop. Supersonic, supersonic now. Love that stuff. Okay, so moving on to. The final portion of the program. Thank you for sticking uh, with us this far, both of you. I'm going to play a little fiddle for you. And there's a joke with that because a big fiddle is known as a cello. So I'll play a little one. And I don't play the cello. And I barely play the fiddle as it is. Okay, so what what I thought I'd show you, this is kind of fun, and you may never use this, but um, oh, where's the preset for that? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So what I'm going to do is show you, I'm, I've got the guitar input fed by the fiddle. So the fiddle's going into the guitar input, so I can take, I can use any of those effects. I can use delay and stuff but I'm in this one I'm using the octaver and it's kind of fun <laughs> that guitar sound is this super shreddy tone from the last song and it, it would be kind of weird on the fiddle do you want to hear it why not <laughs> I feel like I should do like Star Spangled Banner like Hendrix did it sounded a little bit like this All right. So I'm going to go back to my first loop. Yes, it's okay to lose changes. Thank you for asking. Here we go. All right. Had fun playing that for you. 
Well, what I did was just basically uh, in stereo again. It sounds really cool because when I did the sort of uh, the duet cello, the the harmony part in the middle after the double bass, uh, I had them panned left and right. So in stereo, which we will post on YouTube and will be in stereo, uh, you'll be able to hear how it's kind of cool because it opens up, and uh, you know it's not something you're going to use every day, but Heck, if you're entertaining people and you happen to be able to play a fiddle a little bit, you could have some fun. So, do we have any questions? Because if we don't, uh, it's Beer Friday here in um, at the Helipad. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Share if you liked what we saw here. You know, and don't feel like you have to share it necessarily with a musician. You, this could be of interest to somebody who's, uh, um, you know, a civilian, somebody who's not a player, but would be interested to see you know, where modern uh, music technology is. So for now, it's Tom Lang saying thanks for watching and have fun with any gear you have of ours. And um, be sure to watch on Fridays when we do our Facebook Live session. Thanks very much. Bye.